dozen bottles of milk, please. Hello. Sure thing. Right, that should last us a few weeks on the road. You're gonna refrigerate those, right? Ah, I'll be fine, don't worry about it. Hope to see you again. In the shadowy realm of the Group 2 elements, the skeleton king of the periodic table rules supreme atop his gilded throne of bone, tusk, and yoghurt scrapings. Calcium is far and away the most abundant metal in the human body, and you don't exactly need a master's degree in skeleology to see why. The main structural component of bone and tooth enamel is a crystalline calcium compound called hydroxyapatite. Without calcium, human beings would be little more than squishy, toothless bin bags of organs and hair shuffling across the land in search of damp leaves to suckle on. We'd also be very dead, because calcium ion signalling is also an incredibly important part of muscle contraction. Kind of important if you want your heart to keep beating or your glands to keep uh, glanding. Calcium is often found naturally in calcium carbonate, otherwise known as limestone. In the ancient world, limestone was prized as a building material. It was workable enough to be cut into cool little columns, but sturdy enough to prevent forest creatures from huffing and puffing and blowing your parthenon down. There are many different types of limestone, but one of the most common is chalk, the soft porous rock that makes up the beautiful faces of the white cliffs of Dover. Well, yellowy green cliffs of Dover if we're spitting hairs. Up until the 1970s, basically every school and university in the developed world used blackboards, or green boards as the more modern ones should be called. These days, blackboards have largely been replaced by whiteboards, which allow for more colours, are easier to clean, and give teachers a nice surface to project grossly overwritten powerpoints onto. But the Skeleton King still has some holdouts in the 20th century, namely the field of mathematics. In fact, mathematicians love chalkboards so much that certain brands of chalk have accumulated their own highly over educated fan bases. Hagoromo full touch chalk from Japan, colloquially known as the Rolls Royce of chalk, is coveted by mathematicians for leaving clean, thick lines and being easy to erase. The company that invented it closed its doors in 2015, but even though the brand was quickly bought out by a South Korean stationery company, it didn't stop academics from panic buying boxes of Hagoromo chalk in case it was gone for good. I mean, yeah, they could have just switched to a whiteboard instead, but teaching maths without a chalkboard is like trying to study it at the graduate level without being on the autism spectrum. Possible, but God knows you're playing it a disadvantage. While chalk remains the darling of 1950s school teachers and cafe owners in gentrified neighbourhoods, the favourite material of sculptors was marble, a metamorphic rock that forms when sedimentary limestone is subjected to heat and pressure for thousands of years. In the hands of masters like Bernini and Corradini, marble can be fashioned into works of timeless beauty that would forever be immortalised in the profile pictures of turn in the online trad posters. But far from being restricted to statues and economically declining ferry ports, you can also find plenty of calcium in the animal kingdom. Snails, for instance, can be roughly divided into two halves, the shell, made mostly of calcium carbonate, and the rest of the snail, largely made of proteins, water, and a never-ending hunger for lettuce and sweet potatoes. In fact, if you keep a snail as a pet, it's important you give them a source of calcium to munch on for healthy shell growth. Like all mammals, humans evolved to feed their young on breast milk, a completely normal topic that the internet definitely isn't weird about that I can freely discuss without my channel being flagged by the YouTube porn filter. Breastfeeding has numerous health benefits for newborn babies over feeding exclusively with formula. Higher rates of cognitive development, lower rates of obesity in later childhood, lower rates of cardiovascular disease, reduced risk of sudden infant death syndrome, and lower rates of developing type 1 and type 2 diabetes, to name a few. As a chemist, I'm usually sceptical when natural alternatives are touted as universally better than synthetic ones. Calcium supplements are thought to stave off osteoporosis in the elderly, but it doesn't particularly matter whether you get your calcium out of a bottle or from snorting the powdered skulls of your enemies. However, the medical literature really does say that breast is best, particularly in the first six months of a child's life. However, this isn't to say that giving infant formula to a child will turn it into Gromulax the spider baby. The mum might have to work for a company that doesn't give her decent maternity leave. The mum might have a medical condition that makes breastfeeding impossible or dangerous. She might not even be there at all, and the baby's been left in the woods to be raised by wolves or stick insects. Milk has been a staple of the Western diet for centuries, to the point that most supermarkets in the Western world have entire aisles dedicated to the stuff you can make from it. Cheese, yoghurt, ice cream, cream cheese, single cream, double cream, green lean fighting McCream cream among others. However, these treats are best avoided by sufferers of lactose intolerance. 
lactose being a sugar that's common in dairy products. And no, it isn't a calcium compound, but it's vaguely on theme, so I'm cramming it in here anyway. The thing about lactose intolerance is, at least in adults, it isn't really a medical disorder in the technical sense. Practically all babies that survive early childhood can metabolise lactose in their mother's milk, because their bodies produce an enzyme called lactase. But as babies get older, the gene expression that allows for lactase production is meant to be switched off, as the baby gets weaned onto big people food like chicken nuggets and cigarettes. But then some ancient farmer figured out that cows and goats milk is very tasty. A farmer that probably got a lot of weird looks at the time, come to think of it, and over tens of thousands of years, civilizations that were geographically suited to dairy farming developed an advantageous mutation to continue the production of lactase into adulthood. While rates of lactose intolerance are low in Northern Europe, they are close to 100% in West Africa, the Middle East, and East Asia. So next time you're enjoying a tasty ice cream with the boys, just remember to pay thanks to your hideously mutated DNA. You lovable little freaks.